Hi, and welcome back to Pancreas School. My name is Dr. Charles Messerly, a board-certified and fellowship-trained radiologist specializing in abdominal imaging and intervention here at Frederick Hospital and the Medical College of Wisconsin. I'm excited to be here today and take you on a tour through the department at MCW and introduce you to the modalities in medical imaging and people you may meet along the journey of your care while tackling pancreas cancer. But first, what is radiology? As I alluded, radiology is all things medical imaging. A radiologist is a physician that specializes in the various types of medical image and acquisition and interpretation. While a good portion of our daily practice is spent in a reading room looking at images and dictating reports that are made available to the referring physicians, many radiologists also perform image-guided, minimally invasive procedures such as biopsies and drain placements. So the plan for today is to go on a tour through the department and briefly explain the different modalities we primarily use in the care of pancreas cancer patients, see the imaging rooms and equipment, as well as introduce you to the people and technologists that make up the excellent imaging team we have here at MCW. I'm excited, so let's get going. Hmm. So here we are at CT. CT, unlike ultrasound and MRI, is a imaging modality that uses radiation and exposes the tissues, the body tissues, to radiation in order to create the images that we need. It is often the first imaging modality that you might encounter as pancreas cancer patients as, you know, Typical presentations are either to primary care physicians or then to the emergency room, and the first imaging that they order would be a CT scan to figure out what's going on. Uh, there's a couple differences between uh, what a CT scan ordered in that setting in the emergency room or outpatient setting is from a, a full pancreatic cancer staging uh, uh, CT scan, but um, you know that. This is a primary workhorse in uh, imaging diagnosis and workup um, for pancreatic cancer patients. The way it works is that we have uh, detectors and radiation emitters that continuously spin at a very high speed um, as the patient goes from head to toe or toe to head into the scanner and out of the scanner. Uh, this acquires images in axial plane and then from there uh, what we do is post-process the images uh, at, a, at a different workstation outside in the room that creates uh, sagittal and coronal images uh, for us as radiologists to look over uh, cohesively in order to get the best image of, um, of what's going on. Uh, in pancreatic cancer patients, you know, it's often very important to look at the vasculature. So we uh, inject contrast in order to uh, delineate the arteries and veins uh, that are uh, being involved by the primary tumor. And so that we can relay the message of how severe or how uh, insignificant that involvement is to the surgical oncologist for the potential surgical planning. Um, I have Kathy here, who is one of our technicians technologist that is uh, in the CT department that is here to go over kind of what a patient can typically expect on day of scanning and you know from from walking in the door to arriving at the imaging department and you know what does a patient you know typically undergo uh, during their day of scanning um, a typical patient for the day will come in and they'll check in they'll receive a gown at the check-in desk um, where they'll go to a change room and change into their gown um, we do want them to remove all articles of clothing with metal on it. Okay, and that's because, you know, metal creates artifact for us? Yeah, correct, correct. yes. Yeah. So we don't want any artifact imaging. Mm -hmm. um, so once the patients are done changing, one of the technologists will come out and they will come to get the patient. Um, and then we'll bring them into our room where we'll have them lay down on our table here. Typically, they lay down with their head on this pillow on the feet down towards the donut hole there is what we call it. Um, we'll get them comfortable, a warm blanket, and then we'll start with our procedure. Um, our procedures for um, pancreatic cancer is a multi-phase um, where we are injecting contrast dye for the patients. So for that, we do have to start an IV for our patients. Um, we ask them what arm they would prefer prefer um, and then we start the IV. Um, once we have the IV started and while we're kind of you know doing that we discuss what the contrast is all about. Um, our contrast dye does highlight blood vessels in the organs um, and just allows the doctors to see more detail of the images. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there we kind of bring them in. Um, our contrast dye does make people feel very warm from head to toe when they get the contrast. Um, typically, we also say the contrast hits the warm region of the pelvic area and they make them feel like they're going to the bathroom. Um, it's kind of a strange feeling, mm 
Um, but that's normal. But it's normal. But that's yeah, normal to that's normal. That. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we also tell them that they might get a metallic -y taste in their mouth as well. So okay. that's I get another normal, normal finding. Yep, yeah. a normal. All three things are normal. They usually last about a minute and they fade away. So okay. perfect. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So Kathy, I'll follow you into the technologist room so you can show us uh, how things look from from your from your eyes. Okay. Okay, so back here we have our council, we have our two monitors where we'll pull up our patient. Um, and then one thing to note is that we're able to hear and see and also speak to our patients through this council right here. Um, we also have some monitors set up so that we can uh, um, watch as well. So one thing we did forget to mention out in the scanning room is uh, the potential implications of using contrast in, in our patients. Uh, things like uh, allergies and renal function. Um, so, uh, you know, iodine-based contrast, uh, there is a potential for uh, allergic reaction, and if uh, you were to have one of those, it's uh, not a contraindication to getting the scan. Uh, we just need to know about that so that we can premedicate appropriately in order to make the scan as safe as possible. Again, if anything were to happen, you're in the, the, the safest spot for it, uh, so for it to happen if it were to occur. Um, and then in the setting of renal function, the kidneys excrete the contrast material. Uh, so uh, there is a, a risk of potential damage to the kidneys in the setting of poor renal function. And really what we need to know is uh, kind of the baseline or where you're at prior to giving contrast so that we can premedicate or hydrate to, uh, accordingly to mitigate uh, those risks of the damaging the kidneys as much as possible. So when exactly do you, you know, draw the, the blood or address those potential uh, issues. So when our patients check in, they get a health form to fill out um, and then we look at that form as well. Um, but we want to keep our patients safe so we always have them fill that form out. Um, and with, they do need to have a blood sample um, for kidney function. We do start an IV um, and we take it off the IV. So Perfect. Um, yeah. So when they're on the table there and you're placing the IV is typically when you guys do the blood draws? Correct. Awesome. Yep. awesome. And another thing with the contrast and particularly with pancreatic cancer patients, um, you know, we utilize, like you said, dual phase imaging. So the patient goes into the scanner at two different points of time. Um, and that's really to, if you can uh, simulate the body pump, the heart pumping blood vessel, we want to identify the arteries and then the veins. And those, the, the way that those, the contrast goes through those systems is at different times. So that's why we image at two different time points essentially. And um, you know, unlike other modalities such as MRI, imaging scanning, the time itself is uh, much quicker. It's about you know anywhere from 45 seconds to a minute and a half uh, total scanning time. And um, you know, we typically like to standardize things either by a breath hold, um, uh, which you know can often be given from the technologist uh, perspective back here as yep. well. Welcome to MRI. MRI or magnetic resonance imaging, is a unique imaging modality that exposes body tissues to different magnetic field strengths in order to create the images that we need to aid in diagnosis. With pancreatic cancer patients, MRI plays a unique role, not necessarily in the, fact, in the workup or staging of, uh, diag or diagnosis of the primary tumor, but more so along uh, in the surveillance imaging uh, for potential workup of metastatic lesions, for instance, in the liver. I have Luke, one of our technologists here, uh, to explain what patients can expect to, uh, to go undergo on the day of scanning. Yeah, so MRI will always have a patient be MPO, so nothing to eat or drink four hours prior to the, one of these exams. Uh, we always have them fill out a questionnaire, screening form to make sure they're safe to go into the MRI environment. Um, that can also be done on my chart prior to even getting scheduled, uh, just so we know that they're in fact, safe to go into the scanner. That's number one priority. And what might they be looking for as far as safety, MRI safety? So anything from like a pacemaker, defibrillator, cardiac stim stimulators, wires, anything that might be implanted, um, gunshot wounds, shrapnel, um, any type of device that could be inside their body that might contraindicate MRI, but all this is triaged and we wanna make sure they're safe. So on day of scanning, what does a patient typically go through? So once they're screened and once they're changed into a gown, we'll proceed with the exam, we'll get them positioned, we'll start an IV. Uh, we like to inform the patient how long the exam's gonna be. 
Um, they're scheduled for 60 minutes, but kind of with our advancements now, they're anywhere from like 35 to 45 minutes typically now. Mm -hmm. um, but we just want to ensure the patient's comfortable. Uh, and if they have anything of concern, they can reach out and kind of communicate with us whatever we can do to get them through the exam. Perfect. And often it's uh, prevalent to let us know whether or not the patient may uh, experience things like anxiety or claustrophobia. As you know, as he said, Luke said, that imaging times are much often longer than uh, ultrasound or CT. And that's uh, one of the misconceptions or uh, things that are not well known from patients coming into an MRI. So again, MRIs, you know, typically are, the scan time is held off for 60 minutes. They may not take that full time. Uh, but again, it is much longer uh, than a uh, typical scan. And you know, with MRIs, it's also very important that the patient stays still, that the, the breathe, they follow breathing instructions during image acquisition, as all those things impact the quality of the images that we are able to acquire. So Luke, why don't you walk us through the room and introduce us to the room and show us the different components? Absolutely. So we got our scanner right in the middle of the room there. That's our magnet. You see our table here with our set of headphones and a squeeze ball. Um, so the table goes into the bore there, the cylindrical part in the middle of the scanner. And then off to the side of the room, we'll also have an injector kit. All this is used to get the scans completed. Um, we'll position the patient kind of flat on their back with the head on the pillow over there. We can support their legs with a leg cushion. Then we just want to make sure that the patient's going to be as comfortable as they can be for the long scan times. Um, so whether it's coaching them on the breathing instructions, um, just letting the technologist know what we can do to get you comfortable in getting the scan completed. And now, Luke, you know, the images or the, the room itself is, while you guys are in technologists are not in the room while during scanning, um, the room is outfitted with cameras and microphones, is that correct? Correct, correct. So we're always in touch with the patient. We'll be in our control room. Um, setting up the images and everything, um, but we also will outfit the patient with headphones or speak to them through the scanner, kind of keeping them updated on scan times and everything. Um, if there was ever a need for the patient to get in touch with a technologist, they have the squeeze ball, they can always just squeeze that and we can answer them right away. And one last thing, Luke, uh, I know it's uh, very common for uh, people that are undergoing MRIs uh, to hear about this loud, loud uh, noise throughout the duration of their scan. So what exactly is that loud noise? So that's our gradient coils rapidly expanding, contracting. Basically what I just say, it's necessary for us to get the images. Okay. Um, that's why we always provide them with hearing protection and headphones. Um, fortunately, there's nothing we can do about the noise. Um, but if we can offer music, that's what we'll do to kind of help take your mind off of it. Perfect, good, thank you. So this is the technologist room. This is where they uh, work on the computer and uh, set the imaging parameters that they, the magnet is going to be using throughout their scanning time. Uh, as you can see, there's a window where they can see the patient. And again, the whole room is outfitted with microphones and cameras to, to allow the patient um, or uh, the, the technologist access to the patient at any t given time during scanning. So here we are at ultrasound. As you can see, this is a typical ultrasound room uh, here at Freighter and MCW. Uh, a little bit cozier than the prior modalities that we visited in CT and MRI. But again, we don't have uh, a much. We have a much smaller device or ultrasound machine that we use to create our images. Uh, ultrasound is unique in the setting of pancreatic can cancer patients in that. It's not typically not a workhorse for the diagnosis or workup or you know, uh, surveillance imaging. And really that we use ultrasound as a mainstay to evaluate um, targets for potential biopsies or interventions such as uh, drain placements, et cetera. Okay? Uh, ultrasound is unique in that uh, it produces images through sound waves and we use different transducers and, as a, and gel on the skin as a buffer to send those sound waves through tissues in the, such as the abdomen, and uh, those different densities of different tissues emit sound waves back to the transducer at different speeds, which produces the images that we, we look at. Um, ultrasound is a live imaging modality, so as uh, we are scanning with the transducer, we are producing images um, in real time. And uh, really, for 
intervention or pre-procedural evaluation, uh, it's very imperative or very useful in that we can map out things like vessels and bile ducts and in real time um, in, in order to uh, make sure that you know, those are not in our trajectory during potential biopsies or if that were to be the target that we can adequately get access to those, uh, those structures. Um, Couple other things with ultrasound. Um, we use uh, special techniques such as color Doppler imaging to identify the blood vessels and look at flow. Um, we also use what's called spectral waveform analysis, which particularly looks at uh, the flow through a vessel and it can evaluate um, the actual velocities and uh, the waveforms of the, that, the flow through that vessel. And you know that may come into play um, for imaging potential uh, complications from uh, surgery such as Whipple and vascular reconstructions uh, that pancreas cancer patients might undergo. Uh, now I have Amanda here who's one of our technologists in the ultrasound department and uh, she's going to kind of go over the, 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 the day of uh, or what you can expect as a pancreas cancer patient or any patient that comes into the ultrasound department for their scan. Uh, so Amanda, what, what, what do our patients you know, typically undergo uh, from the time they walk into the imaging department, check in, and how do they end up here? Yeah, so typically what they'll do is they'll check in at the front desk. Uh, they will go to the waiting room, and then we will get them from the waiting room. We'll walk you back to the room. Uh, we'll have you lie down on the bed there, and then we would just need access to the area that we're going to be scanning. So we would need, you know, either for you to bring your shirt up, or if we're looking at leg veins, we would need to have pants off. Um, we cover you as much as possible to keep you modest, mm -hmm. but we would need access to that skin. Um, we use the probes here, as Dr. Messerly had mentioned. Um, we put gel on the probe, and then we would just scan over the area with the gel and the probe, and that would produce an image on the screen. Awesome. And, uh, you know, uh, unlike other modalities, MRI, ultrasound, we, we don't typically use IV access. We don't need IV access. Correct. Any, um, you know, pre-scanning pre, uh, pre instructions that you might give a patient? Yeah, so if you're getting a scan on your abdomen, we will typically ask the patient to not eat or drink anything about eight hours prior to the exam. And that just gives us a better window to see everything in the abdomen. Uh, ultrasound. The enemy of ultrasound is air, so when you're eating and you're drinking, you're filling your stomach with air, and then we can't see anything, unfortunately. So we try to get those done in the morning right away, but occasionally we do have to have them in the afternoon, so you would just have to remain NPO or no, nothing to eat or drink for about eight hours. Yeah, perfect, and that, that does come into play also when we're uh, uh, evaluating for potential biopsies and things like that. We're scanning the liver, and uh, you know we wanna make sure that there's a good window for for us, bowels not in the way, that we can see the targets um, as necessary. Um, another thing with ultrasound is because we're doing things in, in, in real time and live imaging, um, a lot of times we are asked to biopsy things in the liver that you know is draped by the diaphragm and the lungs. So uh, oftentimes we may, during your scanning, ask you to take a breath in and hold it and also kind of evaluate how long you can hold your breath uh, in case we need to utilize that uh, technique during the intervention. Um, so that's a basic summary of ultrasound and um, yeah, I think that that covers it well. Again, we're pretty much utilizing this in the setting of evaluating feasibility for potential interventions uh, in, the, in the setting of a pancreas cancer patient. Welcome back to where we started. I hope you enjoyed your tour through the radiology department here at Medical College of Wisconsin and Freighted Hospital. Uh, to recap, we visited CT, MRI, and ultrasound and kind of went through the different procedures that you as a patient might go through in order to get these images done that are pivotal in the workup, diagnosis, and treatment planning for you as a pancreas cancer patient. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to the imaging department at Freighted Hospital and MCW, and we'd be happy to help out.